Hey everybody. I have some things that I think are interesting, at least they are to me. And I'd like to share them with you, and I hope you find them interesting also. They make you think. This first one, these are articles found on www.prophecyinthenews.com. It's a real good site, full of information that'll help you. I hope you'll scoot on over there and begin to enlighten yourself. This a mosaic in Israel shows the biblical Samson. Everybody knows, well, maybe not everybody, but Samson and Delilah. And this is dated on July the 4th. So I'll read, and you can read along with me. The archaeologists are reveling in the discovery of an ancient synagogue in northern Israel, a monumental structure with a mosaic floor depicting the biblical figure of Samson and a Hebrew inscription. In the synagogue dating to the 4th and 5th centuries in both the Talmudic and late Roman periods is in Hukok, an ancient Jewish village in the country's Galilee region. And this is said by the Israeli Antiquities Authority. Jody Magnus, a professor at early, of early Judaism in the Department of Religious Studies at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, said the building was found in a recent excavation. She called this find very exciting and described the very high quality of the artwork in the mosaic, crafted with tiny colored stone cubes. Only a few late Roman period synagogues contain mosaics with biblical scenes. And uh, this is what Magnus said, one of the leaders of a U.S., Israeli, and Canadian team engaged in the digs. This is a significant discovery. She called it extraordinary and stunning. Samson was known for enormous physical strength and his fighting prowess against the Philistines, the enemy of the Israelites. His story, recounted in the Bible's Book of Judges, mentions Delilah, a Philistine woman who worked to undermine Samson. She cut his hair after she persuaded Samson to reveal that his long hair was a secret to his strength. Magnus said the mosaic scene shows Samson putting torches between the tails of foxes. That image, from a vignette in the Book of Judges, is a reference to Samson exacting revenge on the Philistines by sending out flame-laden foxes to burn their lands. She said the only images of Samson in synagogues are at one nearby place in the Galilee known as Wadi Haman, Haman where Samson is seen smiting the Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. Another is in what is now modern Turkey depicting scenes from Samson's life. Samson is also depicted in early Christian art. Why is Samson portrayed and apparently revered in two synagogues close to each other? And this is a question that uh, Magnus says she plans to find out. Now, the other image contains two apparently female faces flanking a circular medallion. It has a Hebrew inscription referring to rewards for carrying out good deeds. Our mosaics are also important because of their high artistic quality and the tiny size of the mosaic cubes. This together with the monumental size of the stones used to construct the synagogue's walls suggests a high level of prosperity in this village as the building clearly was very costly. go. Ever seen the movie Samson and Delilah? It's an old one. Now don't quote me on that but somehow uh, somehow I want to say it was an actor named Steve Reeves that played him but I could be mistaken on that. It's been a long time since I watched it. So that is our food for thought on that issue.
This is also an article I had, dated June the 26th. Armageddon, a space war coming to you soon. There are two prior parts. We'll read through the third. Russia, China, and Iran are now involved in the Syrian situation. There's the possibility that Israel can conduct strikes on Syria's stockpiles of chemical weapons in order to keep them from being used by Hezbollah and Al-Qaeda terrorists. Shortly after 9-1-1, there were unconfirmed satellite reports that Iraq sent WMDs into Syria via truck convoys. Syria is modernizing its long-range missile systems in cooperation with Russia, North Korea, and possibly China. In addition, Syria could be sharing its missile technology with Hezbollah. Hezbollah is controlled by Iran, which according to Debka plans to attack Israel with a low-grade nuclear device. Israel's war preparations are based on the estimate that by the end of 2012, there we go, moving into that phase there, maybe the end of the year, Iran will be able to produce a crude nuclear device as well as a dirty bomb. It calculates as high the risk that Tehran will decide to use those devices for war against Israel in the short term and not wait until it's completed as a complete nuclear warhead ready for a ballistic missile. Potential military intervention in Syria along with NATO missile defense shield along Russia's southern and western borders could provoke a Russian military response that could pull in Iran and China and lead to a regional thermonuclear war in the Persian Gulf. In Isaiah 17.1 we read of a future prophecy of the destruction of Damascus and I spoke of that with you all before. It will fall. The capital of Syria which is destroyed by what appears to be a nuclear weapon. This event could take place during a literal seven year period which the Bible calls the tribulation period. It is during the tribulation period that I believe this would be the author that we will not only we will see not only space-based weapons, but multi-dimensional weapons. Thus, we will see battlefields in space and wars coming from a parallel universe or different dimensions. The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it should be a ruinous heap. Whether or not a conflict that, that level emerges from the present conflict remains to be seen. The list of nations that are in the news today and it could be involved in some kind of Middle Eastern conflict were clearly identified in the predictions of the prophet Ezekiel that were made from 593 to 571 BC and the prophet Daniel. In addition, the Apostle John's visions recorded in the book of Revelation is written in AD 95. Although there are disagreements regarding the identity of certain nations and the sequence of the events, many prophecy scholars believe that Ezekiel 38 predicts a future invasion of Israel by Russia, Iran, and an alliance of nations. And this is an outline of ancient nations and their modern equivalents which are accepted by many scholars. And I believe I mentioned and you can probably find that uh, I think Putin said even, he said that Ezekiel 37 had been fulfilled. The land of Magog, Russia. Meshach and Tubal, the region of Russia. Persia is Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan. Ethiopia and Ethiopia and Sudan. Libya, Libya. Ashkenaz, Austria. Gomer, Eastern Europe and Germany. Tagarma, Southern Europe, Turkey. Many peoples with the, uh, the other nations. The questions may be asked, where are nations like Egypt, Libya, the Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Iraq, and Great Britain, America, China, Japan, Korea, Canada, Australia, and Saudi Arabia? Are they identified in the scriptures? In the case of Ezekiel 38, the War of Gog and Magog, there is a list of nations, but scholars debate as to whether or not Ezekiel 38 is referring to Armageddon or a separate battle to come before Armageddon. If we will simply acknowledge that both Ezekiel 38 and Armageddon are prophecies of future conflicts that will lead us to the end of the age, the list of key nations expands beyond the Ezekiel 38 list. In Ezekiel 38, one of the primary messages in this passage of scripture is that Russia, Iran, and the nations who invade Israel are supernaturally defeated by God and not by any human army. Giant hailstones and earthquakes strike these armies.
Many of the nations absent from Ezekiel 38 are found in Psalm 83, which leads many scholars to argue that there will be a distinct Psalm 83 war before Ezekiel 38. In an article in the February 9, 2010 Omega Letter entitled Psalm 83 Visit Revisited by Jack Kinsella, he credits Bill Salas, author of Israelistein, for much of the research, and Salas believes the Psalm 83 war is imminent. Despite numerous arguments to the contrary, America is not specifically named in the Bible. It, is, it very well may be there indirectly by inference. America may be described as one of the young lions of Tarshish, which are the national descendants of the nation represented by the lion, which is Great Britain. America may be referred to in the verse, those who dwell at ease in the isles. America will probably be part of the revived Roman Empire, and some believe America is what referred to as Babylon in the book of Revelation. Some scholars believe that Gog is the title of human political leader of Magog, the prince of the land of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. Yet Gog may not be a human leader at all. Gog may very well be a territorial spirit who rules over Russia. The prophet Daniel talks about spirits or powerful angelic beings that control geographical ter geographic territories. Daniel speaks of the prince of Persia or Iran or the prince of Greece. These are not earthly princes. These are ruling demonic beings that control geographic territories and nations from another dimension. Powerful angels like Michael and Gabriel are waging war in a parallel universe against beings like the prince of Persia. Excuse that, that was my phone. I didn't turn that off. Any attempt at full spectrum dominance in space-based weapons is incomplete without an understanding of the reality of multidimensional warfare. The future of war will take place in both outer space and in other dimensions. Both the book of Joel and the book of Revelation describe armies coming from the abyss or a different dimension. As the world moves towards Armageddon, there will be an invasion of supernatural armies that will come from a dimension beyond time. Although the concept of multidimensional warfare may be difficult for some to grasp, there was a time, not that long ago, when the reality of space-based weapons seemed an impossibility. It wasn't until the Russian U.S. space programs were launched that warfare in and from space became a reality. At some point in the future, most likely during the tribulation period, nations like Russia, China, and in some form the United States will employ space-based weapons. The Russian goal for space before 2030 is establishing a base on the moon. Uh, let me read that again. The Russian goal for space before 2030 is establishing a base on the moon. Well, there may already be stuff up there. Uh, it's not like we can fly up there and check it out ourselves. But how many people laughed at Newt Gingrich when he was trying to get the uh, nomination over Romney, and he mentioned we need to build a base on the moon. So if there weren't one already, well, it's like the Russians aren't laughing about it because it's a goal of theirs. So people were wrong to laugh at that. Uh, and the man was correct whenever Peace said whatever financial investment would be made to establish something like that, it would bring in, I believe it was like 17 times your investment. It was just unreal. Um, so back to this. Uh, according to the document to the Russian space agency Roscosmos, Russia plans to run an orbital lunar station and maintain large spacecraft and interorbital spaceships on near-Earth orbits by 2020. Now, that's not long off. The military potential in all of this is quite obvious. And we're not going to forget the Martians, are we? Mars is also a goal both the U.S. and Russia have. When there is a man landing on Mars, maybe well, we may well begin the era of multidimensional warfare. Remember that the prophet Daniel predicted a revived Roman Empire. The Romans were enamored with the god of war, who was called Mars. Although hotly disputed and some say discredited, there are parallel images on both Mars and Earth, such as the Pentagon shape. 
There are many scientists who believe that the Earth has been visited by extraterrestrial races. This belief is embedded in popular movies like Prometheus, which I saw. It is also a belief that goes back to the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 6, where there's a reference made to the sons of God, mating with human women and producing a race called the Nephilim. Many believe the sons of God were aliens who visited the Earth. However, a growing number of, number of biblical scholars believe that these beings actually came from another dimension and are angelic or demonic beings. Demons and evil spirits come from fallen angels. Enoch has told us this. During Armageddon, there is a reappearance of the Nephilim. The existence of the Nephilim, coupled with the military applications of transhumanism, uh, please refer yourself to all the books and videos by Tom Horn. He is a complete expert in the subject of transhumanism and other various topics. And he is quite true, and he does not lie. He is a man of the word. <clears throat> application of transhumanism and space-based weapons led inevitably, inevitably to the final battlefield which is interdimensional. The existence of this dimension, which lies beyond space and time, has been proven by the string theory in physics. In the world of theology, this word is often referred to as the invisible realm or spiritual word, world. When Bible prophecy refers to the last days or the end of the age, it is also referring to the end of this present age in the dimension of time. We are rapidly approaching a world beyond time, and that means the human race is about to enter eternity. For both mankind as a race and us as individuals, that has profound implications. And there are the two other parts prior to this, like I stated, are very interesting. At least to me it is. I hope you find it interesting too. Now, <clears throat> I took some pictures the other night and I find these to be interesting also. This would be as the moon was coming up. How orangey it looked. Just another shot of it, a different, little different of an angle. And I know, as soon as I show some more and say it, somebody's gonna say, your lens was dirty, or it's a light reflection. Blah, 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 got that before. Can't help you with it. I just find these things to be strange because uh, after I shot the moon, I just basically did a panoramic of the sky and I shot indiscriminately. Uh, no certain area I was concentrating on. And you get the uh, strange whatever they are showing up there. Now I've got others I've saved like that. And I got quite a few hammerings telling me that the lens was dirty and there was a spot on it and it was a reflection and blah blah blah. I think what I think, they'll think what they think, and I hope uh, I hope these interest you as much as they do me. That's it. That's it. Now, I, what I can say is this, this one was actually this, that's a different area. You know, I was shooting it at a different angle, pointing at something different. I just find them quite interesting and I wanted to bring them to you and show them to you. I haven't, uh, I haven't really shot a whole lot of stills. I've been shooting with my mini cam and then checking some stuff out. The mini cam doesn't have quite the magnification of, of my still camera. So there it is. Now what I can say <clears throat> is I hadn't got 
this whatever it is in a long time. So anybody going to keep telling me my camera's dirty or there's something on it? Uh, well, I'm going to disagree with you because it's not. And it is, uh, it's just interesting to me. Very. So, I'll let you all go. I'm going to settle in and do a little bit of research and try and relax with some other things. And I'll speak to you soon. As far as I know, the earthquakes haven't picked up. I don't believe the CME has caused any big problems. At least not yet, if any. I'll be checking into those things. And if uh, something changes, I'll be back. It's like Arnie. I'll be back. Well, y'all be good. It's clear here. It's another good night for sky watching, and I'm gonna go out and take some more stills. And I'm gonna look at them again. I'm gonna be shooting these same areas that I was looking at indiscriminately, but uh, that's the way it seems to always work with me. Whenever I take still photos of a nice sky, if if I've got an area that I really want to look at, and I shoot it, it doesn't seem like I get anything, you know, odd. Seems like I get what I what I want, but if I just uh, you know I just see a star cluster or something and I hold the camera up and just kind of yeah that looks pretty cool and I shoot it like that I get something strange you know and sometimes it'll just be black and you can't even see a star anywhere in the blackness and I'll just hold the camera straight up above my head and just flash three or four times. And then you'll, sometimes I get crazy strange stuff that shows up on it. So, that's just the way it is. So I'll holler at everybody soon. This, I really like. I really like this find. I hope you like it too. Have a good rest of the weekend. You'll hear from me soon. God bless all of you. Shower you with his love and protect you.